Today is uh, Tuesday, January the 15th, 2019. I want to thank you for joining me at Covenant Keepers Ministries as we're taking a, a period of time to talk through the Ten Commandments, I'm doing one more day of kind of preliminary work just to seal this, make sure we understand that no man, no woman, no teenager, no child is saved by works. We are justified by the grace of God, the mercy of God. And so it's important for us to understand that we had better be a people of good works because that's what God ordained for us. But that none of those works, no matter how many good deeds we do, can save us. And I know a lot of us, we try to balance the books and, and we try to stay on top and say, well, I've got one more good deed or I've got 10 more good deeds. That should carry some influence with God. What carries influence with God is the blood of Jesus Christ. So I'm, I'm reading from Matthew 5, 17 through 20, as we try to reinforce this thought before we enter into the discussion of the Ten Commandments. Here's what Jesus said. Do not think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For assuredly, I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle will by no means pass from the law till all is fulfilled. Whoever therefore breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches men so shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does and teaches them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say to you, that unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Now we are beginning a discussion of the Ten Commandments. These commandments reveal the character of and the moral nature of God. They reveal who God is to us. The moral and ethical principles still apply to us today as we examine them. It is the ceremonial, sacrificial, social, and civil law given to Israel, which are no longer binding on New Testament believers. So Don Stamps commenting on this scripture in Matthew 5 makes the following statements. The believer must not view the law as a system of legal commandments by which to obtain merit for forgiveness and salvation. We don't see the system as giving us merit. And if we don't fulfill it, we get a demerit. He goes on to say, rather the law must be seen as a moral code for those who are already in a saved relationship with God and who by obeying it express the life of Christ within themselves. Through faith in Christ, believers by the grace of God and the indwelling Holy Spirit are given an inner compulsion and power to fulfill God's law. Jesus emphatically taught that doing the will of his heavenly Father is an ongoing condition of entering the kingdom of heaven. Christ, so to speak, crossed every T, dotted every I in fulfilling the wrath and justice of God on behalf of the sin of mankind. He became our substitute and died in our place. Having now written the moral law, the ethical and moral law upon our hearts, we are empowered to live that moral life which is pleasing to God. See, he gave us the Holy Spirit to empower us to live that life which is pleasing. He stamped it on us, and then he gave us the Holy Spirit to ensure that the stamp gets worked out. We don't approach God through our works. And, and we don't get to come to God and say, well, look, at this is what I did this last week. See, I knocked on five doors and presented the gospel or prayed for people. Or I, uh, you know, I stopped in the grocery store and somebody was hurting and I helped them and and, you know, I shoveled my neighbor's driveway. And, and we could go through the list of things. And, and we make this mental checklist. And, man, I'm doing really good. And then when we have a bad week and we ignore somebody who fell and we just walk by him. Or we, we don't shovel our neighbor's driveway. Or we don't treat our spouse or our kids properly. Then we, you know, we're just depressed. That our relationship with God is not based on our good works. They may be proof that he has done a work inside us, but we are justified through the blood of Jesus Christ. That relationship is unchanging unless we're unrepentant of our sin. 
our works, which are we are appointed and predestined to, are a manifestation of the saving work of Christ within us. We don't approach God through our works. We approach God through the blood of the Lamb. So as we begin tomorrow to examine these commands, let our hearts be enlarged to a deeper place of consecration to the one who alone can save us and has redeemed us from our sin. May a new sense of delight in serving God spring out of our inner being for his glory. Join me in praying that God will enlighten us and, and give us an anointing by the Holy Spirit to give him good pleasure. Heavenly Father, we approach you in the name of your Son, our High Priest Jesus Christ, who has given us bold access to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. And we come with thanksgiving in our hearts for the provision of Christ in our lives. And we pray for fresh anointing. We pray for a new spring of living water, wells of which never run dry, that we might delight to serve our God by serving others. And we praise you. We praise you that the Holy Spirit is at work in us day by day to do that very thing. And we give you the glory for it. May it be to your honor and to the praise of your glory. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Grace and peace. Have a blessed day.